What is going on, YouTube friends and family? This guy with Beard Guns and Gear. Um, kind of sort of doing an unbox today. It's been something that's on my list, but I've been really busy lately with the reload stuff. So I've been playing a lot with my new toys uh, and haven't got around to it and trying to find the one that I want at the price that I want. So we're gonna do a virtual unbox because this thing comes in many pieces. But as you can see, I picked up a Caldwell Lead Sled DFT2. And uh, voila, there it is. Why this lead sled? Well, I mean, there's plenty of other ones. This one seems to be good budget-wise. I think they go for about $350 Canadian. You can get them. Uh, I saw that Cabela's actually had uh, like a really killer deal on them. $200 in the gray, but they didn't have one that was within driving range, at driving distance of where I was. So uh, anyway, I ordered this one and it showed up uh, green, not gray, and not the sale. But uh, like I said, 350 bucks. It is a solid piece of gear. I mean, you can see that it's a, when it comes in its pieces, every single piece is a cast iron metal, um, elevation adjustment. I mean, it's got a big old wheel on there, uh, windage adjustment on this. Actually, I can tell you exactly why uh, if I just read quickly the specs and you know, it'll tell you on the box, right? Like all the things this one does as opposed to the other ones and the DFT2 kind of fit everything I wanted to go with. I wanted something that I could work with a lever action. This one I can. Uh, as I said, if you look, it's got like two tubes instead of the standard single rail. So if you have a lever or a long magazine, It'll fit between there and not interfere. You can even change uh, the magazines while you're doing that. It also has uh, precision elevation adjustment. Yep, definitely precise. I mean, it is solid. Um, accepts lead shot bags. Absolutely, you can slide two in here. It'll hold actually up to 100 pounds. Uh, magnum rifle, slug guns, adjustable length. Uh, like I said, lever and up to a 95% recoil reduction. Not really why I picked it up. And you guys, I know there's, this is gonna open up a little bit of controversy because a lot of people will buy this to shoot accurately. And that is not, in my opinion, that is not the uh, reason why you purchase something like this. In my mind, this has a perfect application, let's say, if you're doing reloading, as I am, and you're trying to work out a perfect uh, or a better load production for you know testing like something on, let's say a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what I'm doing next. And I wanna try and find the perfect balance. I've got all kinds of different projectiles. I've got all kinds of different powders. I've got different primers. I've got different size uh, seating depth, so on and so on. And I wanna try and find out which one is the perfect one. So if you are bench shooting and you just have your bipod out there and maybe a bag, you still have quite a bit of human element uh, that could, you know, mess with your shots. And so are you getting real data from your tests? Difficult to say. The only way that you can get real data is if the shot is the same from each successive test. One way to eliminate yourself out of the equation is with a very good uh, lead sled. And I mean, this thing, I, I don't know if you actually need weight. You can obviously shoot it without the weight, but uh, it's very chunky. I mean, it already weighs probably 30 pounds. Another thing I'll say that I like about this is uh, it came with its own tools. So yeah, okay, the little wrench is kind of chintzy, but you ever do one of those impulse buys when you're on your way out to the range and then you get out there and you say, oh crap, I don't have the proper tools that I need. Well, this already has it. So you could put it together and then maybe when you get home, tighten it with something that's not going to flip sideways like these wrenches or, you know, there's a use for this one somewhere, but it's, it's really, it's very thin. Allen keys are fine. So let me just, for instance, you're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor which I just happen to have. Look, you can even, I think you can even put this in here with the bipod out. Yes, you can. And as you can see, there's a strap on the front. I don't have the strap pulled down, but you could, if you're shooting something that had a lot of recoil, strap it down on the front. 
Uh, it does not interfere, but you can see how nice and snug it fits in there. And then when you're adjusting, like you can make very minute adjustments, windage and elevation, as I said, there is a recoil pad at the back. So you're not going to distort. And there's even a nice little, uh, I'll flip the, uh, after I take the rifle off, I'll flip this around so you can kind of see what I'm, I'm talking about right now. But I mean, as far as like doing any kind of adjustments, you basically set this thing up and forget about it. And look at that. You still have access to your magazine. By the way, the firearm doesn't even have a bolt in it, so it's absolutely 100% safe. But you have access to your magazine, lots of room. And then when you're looking down, you know, obviously you want to tuck that into your shoulder and fire as you normally would. But this is going to take all of, well, not all, but 99% of the human interaction you have with your firearm. This is not like those people who say, well, man, my, my, uh, I went out there and I'm, I'm an awesome shot. And I got like, you know, groupings of, uh, I don't know, a third of an inch. If you're shooting with this and you say you're grouping third of an inch, no, you're not. No, the lead sled is, uh, whatever lead sled you have, but you're, you are not shooting. So this is a good way to just test something. Let's say you put a new mu muzzle brake on there and you want to see what the difference is. Well, you have your data from your previous shots, change out the muzzle brake, and then you can test the new one. So you can see exactly real time what effect it's going to have. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do a video on this really quick is because we're probably heading to the range very soon. The weather has finally started to warm up uh, to where it's been windy the last couple of days. So I hesitate to going out there in the strong winds. But uh, the weather has started to warm up where we can actually spend a decent amount of time at the range. So uh, this is the firearm that I bring, plan on bringing out there because I'm working on some 6.5 loads to test to see how that goes. So I'll take the rifle out of there, but you can see that it cradles and how it cradles. And I mean, it's very stable in there, even without like hanging on to it. So I'll take this out real quick. And then I'll show you the kind of the features that I was talking about. So around the back of the sled, you have like a, a little area where you would put your shoulder into while you're looking down. And then as you can see, there is in this area right here, how's the best way to look at this? Maybe like this. Okay. You see that there's a very generous thick foam, foam pad here. So I read a lot of the uh, comments about shooting and it's saying, well, it's not good for your rifle because you're taking all the recoil out of it. So if I loaded this down with a hundred pounds, maybe, strap the rifle in there, you know, a semi-automatic maybe, but a bolt action with a, a, a big recoil pad on the back of it, even if this thing doesn't move, there's no way that you're gonna damage your rifle just by firing around and absorbing up to 95% of it. So um, anyway, I wanted to show some of the controls on it, which are gonna be difficult. Like everything locks into place, everything is steel, even there's these, you know, little lockdown pins here on the side. They're steel with a brass bushing on the inside. Uh, an excellent, well-made, well, I think Hootie Who uses this one or one similar. But anyway, a very, very, very well-made sled for 350 bucks Canadian. I don't think you can go wrong. Don't buy a cheap one. Like, there's tons of other ones. There's the solo and the three. If you just want something to help you out, get a better stable shooting position, sure. But if you're doing real-time testing, working up loads, or uh, zeroing your rifle, let's say, and you want to uh, like really dial in that scope, and then, now if you take that rifle after you've dialed in the scope and it's shooting perfectly, and you go to pull your first rounds and you're getting like three, four-inch groupings, it's you. Okay, it's not the sled, it's not the rifle, it's you. So maybe that would help itself. You can video what you're doing and break down and see where you can improve. Anyway, guys, that's that's the video. That's the unbox. That's what it is. Lead sled DFD2, excellent lead sled in my humble opinion. Uh, very robust, very solid. Uh, I really like it. I especially like how the fact at the back here um, leaves the room so you don't have a bunch of adjustments and whatnot back here. So you can kind of pull that into your shoulder and get a more natural um, 
a more natural feeling. Of course, you can raise and lower at the back here by a little turn. Uh, just solidly made. I mean, the, the welding looks a little boogery, but you know, whatever. What does it say? A grinder fix the, f can fix the weld that I'm not? Something along those lines. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's not taking a lot of force anyway. So again, we'll see this out in the range very soon. I am the guy with beard, guns, and gear. Don't forget to click that like, subscribe, please. And we'll see you at the range.